and I and thank you for your kind words and uh, thank you, Ranking Member Cole. I appreciate you hosting uh, the member day hearing and appreciate the opportunity to share with you some ideas for improving the House rules for the 117th Congress. Two years ago, uh, in testimony before this committee, I proposed as part of the House rules for the 116th Congress a committee to consider measures to improve the operation of Congress and an independent as an independent and co-equal branch of government. And under your leadership, the Select Committee on the Modernization of Congress was created as part of the rules package for the 116th. Uh, as chair of the Select Committee, I'm here to um, say thank you for your guidance and support over the past two years. I'm very grateful to you and to your staff. I, and with that help, the Select Committee unanimously passed 97 bipartisan recommendations to make Congress work better for the American people. And I'm proud of what we achieved and I'm grateful for the opportunity to lead the effort along with Vice Chair Tom Graves and in partnership with Mr. Woodall and Ms. Scanlon from your committee um, who serve very ably. I'm also here to share with you some of the bipartisan recommendations the Select Committee recently passed that would improve the way the House functions. The Select Committee spent a lot of time focusing on ways to reclaim Congress's Article I powers and made a number of strong recommendations in that space. And the first proposal I'd like to highlight will help restore Congress's Article I power of the purse. We recommended on a bipartisan basis, a community focused grant program to reduce dysfunction in the annual budgeting process and to restore Congress's unique constitutional authority to appropriate federal dollars to support projects that have the broad support of local communities across the United States. This competitive grant program calls for transparency and accountability and supports meaningful and transformative investments in the communities we represent. Taxpayer dollars will be spent more efficiently and transparently on local projects with guardrails against abuse. And the Select Committee believes that this program could help end the era of government shutdowns, and I urge the committee to include it as part of the 117th uh, Congress's rules package. In addition to the community-focused grant program, I'd like to share a couple of ideas designed to strengthen Congress's Article I powers. The first has to do with encouraging the Article I principle of debate and deliberation. The Select Committee recommended establishing a pilot for weekly Oxford-style policy debates on the House floor. Debate exposes us to perspectives that are different from our own and requires us to really think through our positions in order to build the best arguments we can. It requires the ability to listen as well as speak, and that's incredibly important. My Select Committee colleague, Emmanuel Cleaver, constantly reminded us that how we treat each other matters. And these Oxford style debates could showcase passionate but civil exchanges about the issues of the day, and we should encourage more of that. Along the same lines, the Select Committee recommended that committees experiment with alternative hearing formats to encourage more bipartisan discussion. Committees should try questioning witnesses in ways that encourage discourse rather than grandstanding. I also recommend that more committees follow the Select Committee's lead and experiment with mixed seating arrangements where Democrats and Republicans sit side by side rather than on opposite sides of the dais. These simple experiments encourage dialogue and civility and ultimately strengthen Congress. Including these ideas in the next House Rules Package would help Congress restore Article I capacity. Another way to build capacity is to build efficiency into the congressional schedule. Between committee work, floor work, running a personal office, and constituent work in the district, the demand for time is constant. So the Select Committee tried to find ways to reduce frustrating conflicts. We focused on committee work and recommend that the House establish specific committee only meeting times when Congress is in session. We also recommended that the House establish specific days or weeks where committee work takes priority. Creating a common committee calendar portal to help with scheduling could also reduce conflicts. These ideas will make Congress work more efficiently and productively on behalf of the American people. Finally, I'd like to thank you for your continued attention to a number of operational issues the Select Committee has recommended. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, we recommended that the House update its procedures to allow members to electronically add or remove their names as bill co-sponsors. We're happy to see this now in effect and think it should be permanently authorized. Same goes for our recommendations to expand the use of digital signatures and make permanent the option to electronically submit committee reports. We should adopt procedures that make Congress more efficient rather than reserve them for emergencies. The COVID-19 pandemic has for forced us to take a hard look at continuity issues and think about how we can better prepare for the unexpected. The Select Committee uh, recommends that committees establish bipartisan telework policies and update systems to encourage in-person electronic voting and other modern technologies. Cybersecurity telework and emergency preparedness training should also be given to all members of Congress. By taking these steps, we can ensure that Congress is fully prepared in the event of another crisis. 
continuity of, continuity of government plan should be built into our procedures and happen as a matter of course. From day one, the Select Committee's guiding principle has been to make Congress work better so that we can better serve the American people. That simple but profound goal has guided all of our work, some of which I've shared with you today. Vice Chair Graves and I believe the bipartisan ideas that we propose to improve the House rules can help build capacity and ultimately strengthen Congress, and we hope they will be implemented. For that matter, our committee, committee generally agreed that the work to modernize and improve the People's House should be an ongoing effort, not once every 20 or 30 years or so. And so I'd encourage this committee to consider how, if at all, to ensure that work of improvement continues going forward. On behalf of the Select Committee, I appreciate your consideration. I'm happy to provide additional information to support your work. And thank you again for your leadership, partnership, and for the opportunity to speak before the committee today. Thank you very much.